Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Shepherd's Corner, and I want to wish you Happy Easter. Happy Easter to everybody in Trinidad and Tobago, around the Caribbean, wherever you are watching us. I bet you didn't think that we would have Shepherd's Corner. Well, I want to welcome Archbishop Jay. We are in different places. We are keeping our social distances. But using social technology to overcome social dis physical distancing with social connections. <laughs> happy Easter, Archbishop Jay. And to you too, Derek. Happy, happy Easter. Amen. Now, we have a conversation. Our conversation is where we must put our hope. And somebody asked your question, Archbishop G, how do you keep hope alive in a time like this? Boy, that is a real serious question, you know. I pondered the question for three days before I wrote it. Huh? <laughs> uh, this one, I, didn't, I couldn't just jump in and start writing. I, I had to, to ponder this one. So Monday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, I pondered. Wednesday morning, I wrote how do you keep hope alive? Well, you see, hope is only real when the hour is dark. Hmm. See, it's when the world is plunged into darkness and when the dawning light is diminished that hope emerges. Yet, it is always present in a silent kind of fragile way as we awaken each morning to a new day see new possibilities and engage new shared relationships it, it is that hope whether it is in a dark moment or mm -hmm. in a moment of, of 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 wonderfulness hope is always present in the dark moment it, it's in one in one sense easier to find because you either find it or you plunge into despair in the easy moment it's always there. It's just that it is not as, as, as visible to you because it's a little more behind the scenes. It's in the, in the subtleties. You, you ever realize everything going good, you wake up on the morning, what do you do? You smile, yeah. you thank God, you, you, you just think how fortunate it is for another day. All of that is hope. Huh? All of yeah. those are expressions of hope. But, but it is that we don't quite see it in the, in the light. But when we plunge into the darkness, that's when we kind of realize what hope really is about. And that's when we kind of realize how we need to keep hope alive. You know, um, this must be an, um, a really trying time for the whole world. Um, we are in our own little island here. And, and, and I know that they're watching us all over the world and as well as all the little Caribbean islands. But Easter is that time for hope. You know, it, it's when yeah. we, it, it's a time for building hope. So how do we engage again hope when all we see around us is darkness, uncertainty? Well, that's the hard one. That's the hard one because if we don't keep it, we we would be we would lose it, and if we lose it, that's that's where we really have have the challenge, and 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 that's why I'm I'm proposing that Easter and hope, COVID nineteen and the plunge mm -hmm. into darkness, really is a wonderful moment. So consider for a moment what the disciples were experiencing. You know, up until the morning of the resurrection, what were they experiencing? Consider the two men walking on the way to Emmaus. Yeah. You know, it, it says their faces would were, were downcast, they they were gloomy, they they were talking about these terrible things that had happened. They they were they were in this space of hopelessness. And in that space of hopelessness, then comes the third figure, and then we know the story hope re-emerges. So this COVID-19 experience and the resurrection experience aren't dissimilar. The difference is only if you think you're in this by yourself. If you don't see that God's hand is in this, if you don't realize that God is here and, and that God is active, 
if you don't realize that every single day God is knocking on your life, if you don't realize those things, then you, you don't realize that, that hope is, is real, alive, and well. Now, that's easy for us to see. I mean, I know, and I know that your whole message is one of hope, the Easter hope, but there are many shut-ins. There are many people yeah. alone by themselves, and they feel as if they're in this by themselves. You know, yes. I think of my own mother shut in, you know, 80 something years old. I, I, I can't go and see her. You know, I have to tell her, Mom, you know, I, I can't come and see you. You know, I can't hold you. I can't touch you. And so she feels that she is alone in this place and she's not well. She can't afford to get sick. No. So I'll drive by my mom, stay in the car, <laughs> call her, bring her out into the gallery. <laughs> wave <laughs> we talk a little bit and then i i would go and talk to her on the phone yeah but yeah. um yes it's a it's a tough one you know but then so here's a story i had this week um i've been telling people call call other people that you know especially those who are elderly and shutting just just call them and yeah. she said you know it was the most amazing experience she had she called one elderly person and the elderly person was just so happy to see her. And, yeah. and she talked and they talked and they talked. And, and, and in the midst of the conversation, the elderly person said to her, anyhow, um, how are you getting your green groceries? She said, well, that is a real problem because I, uh, I could, when I go to the, to the um, grocery, I'll see what you say. No, 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 no. That, this is the number for my green grocer, which is just wrong, not too far from you. Call, right. make your order and, right. and, and walk with cash and do a curbside pickup on the day when you can go to the, when you're going to the grocery. Right. So she said, all of a sudden, this person that she called to bring hope to has right. brought hope back to her because right. she now has a green grocer that she have a number for. She could right. get fruits. She could get the things that she wants. Yeah. And, yeah. and so it, it is, is brought, she was calling to give hope, but, yeah. but hope came back to her. The same lady said, you know, another day when I said on television, call somebody, call. She called another person she thought about that she hadn't spoken to for a long time. And at the end of the, towards the end of the conversation, the lady said, but, but do you have your homemade mask? <laughs> she said, actually, no, I don't. He said, well, here's what you're going to do. When are you going out again? She said, well, I have to go to the grocery such and such a time. He said, well, okay. what to do? is I will put, I'll hang them um, such and such a place for you. So right. that when you go, just come and pick them up and, yeah. and go, but we will talk. And she, she did that and dropped something for the lady. So yeah. hope is, is also in what we make of it mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. how we share with each other that, that, that joy of Easter is, is how we, we allow this hope to, to really be alive in, in our life. Well, you talked about it as action fueled by love, you know, yes. and to engage again as if for the first time, and, and for those people that you were sharing with us, it was, it became action fueled by love, something we've not relied much on hope as a virtue in the last 50 years. Because in the last 50 years, we have had an economy that has done particularly well. And only in the 1980s, when the economy tanked because of oil prices and stuff, that we, we kind of had a little Calcutta, if you'd like. Um, but that's minor by comparison to what we were going to do this time. Mm -hmm. But in that time, we had a, 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 a shift in focus. Mm -hmm. Now, 50 years on, after 50 years of pretty much um, growth in economy, for mm -hmm. most decades except for the 80s, we, we, we now are faced with a, a fundamental change as we hit 2020. And, and that fundamental change is going to ask of us to live hope in a very different way from how we have lived hope before. Because before, we've been happy to believe that everything will get better <clears throat> because it always does. We've been happy to believe that things will always be brighter in, in tomorrow because it always gets brighter tomorrow because that's an experience of 50 years as two generations. Right. Now we have to have hope knowing that things actually might get worse. Hmm. 
it might actually get worse, but we still have to have hope. And that's why I'm saying to engage again as if for the first time. Yeah. What has become routine is a matter of faith and action fueled by love. Because faith, hope, and love are the three virtues that are intertwined and, and, yeah. and they work together. And, yeah. and, and if you go back to the two stories I told, as an act of love and faith, a call was made. Yeah emerged out of that that call was love faith and hope yes yes yeah yeah so, yeah so it's 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 how we choose to engage and how we choose to see because if we choose to be despair well then 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 we choose to go the route of believing that jesus is not here right now in this time and if but we I'll choose be to believe he is here in this time then then we have to become hope for other people but in our modern world, your article, and I want everybody to get your Catholic news, right? Now, this, yeah. was, this was Sunday's Catholic news. So, and, and I have been to the pharmacies. We have zero, zero. So we need to get some more outside. And we want to let all the viewers know, listen, you can pick up your electronic version of the Catholic news. Yes, you can subscribe. So subscribe. There is a reduced price right now. Go and subscribe. That way you make sure you have it every week. You don't miss a beat because we have so much great information on the Catholic news. So if you're so, you, you, you said Western scientific progress has shifted our focus from hope. Correct. In all the big questions, we've sidestepped yes. the God question. Mm -hmm. And we've relied instead on our power to see our human power to transform nature, to come up with a solution to the challenge. Yes. And again, so we've had 50 years where most decades have actually been decades of, of, of incredible economic growth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then we've had 50 years where scientific progress has accelerated in the, in the same exponential way that the virus has. Mm -hmm. So your computer two years ago is half as powerful as the computer you get today. Right. And two years from now, it will be twice as powerful as this one. And that doubling twice keeps jumping up. It's, it's an exponential growth. And mm -hmm. so scientific power has been such that it has grown in an exponential way. And, and so we have always believed that somehow or the other, the science will catch up with our needs and our deficiencies. And that's why we've been wasteful with the, with, the, with the ecology. And that's why we've not taken care of the environment because we always feel that some new scientific invention will save us from, from our own stupidity and our own lack of care of the environment. And, 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 and because of that, <laughs> the science has kept keeping up and jumping. So we, we, we become very complacent and we've really been, been terrible to the environment, terrible to, to the, the poor and the marginalized, terrible to people who are technologically on the other side of the equation. Well, I want to give you a paradox. You know, paradox is our, our, our word. Paradox, paradox. Here's the paradox. You spoke about every two years, technology changes. Well, let's yeah. put it this way. It doubles. Our, our, uh, it doubles. But our science is two years behind finding a solution to COVID. <laughs> so that's the paradox. That's the paradox. And, and for the first time, we have been outscienced by a little microbe. By a microbe. By a little microbe. We've been outscienced. That, that we, we know it's going to be a year and a half to a vaccine that is tried, tested, and for sale, or for herd immunity, whichever one comes first, it's a year and a half. So we know this is a, a, a COVID reality that we have to live with. And we, we, we have to figure out how to live with this reality in a way that makes sense, that is intelligent, that, that, is, that is thoughtful, that is respecting other people, that is ensuring we're not putting ourselves and other people at harm. We, we have to live in, in this post-COVID or in this COVID reality. This is our new reality. This is our new normal. I wanna, that's I wanna bring... part of what we're doing. I want to bring you back to your article where you said 
St. Paul says to the Romans, for in this hope we were saved. But mm. hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. Well, boy, we gotta wait for this. Isn't that beautiful? It is isn't, amazing. Isn't, that, isn't that amazing how scriptures open up to, yes. uh, to context, like, like the, the COVID context that we have, and, and how it opens up with a text like this text from Romans 8, 24 to 25, and just takes your breath away? For this hope, we were saved. Mm -hmm. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have. But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. We wait for it patiently. And you know, <laughs> our generation is not uh, great at patience. Huh? <laughs> no, you, you know, you, Listen. You know, we, we are the generation that drew up on instant every single thing. Eh? <laughs> every but what about the millennials? What about the millennials? No, they no, no, no. They're on steroids. But, but you and I, we, <laughs> we grew up in an age of instant coffee, instant tea, instant everything. Eh? And, and the generations below us, they are accustomed not for it only to be instant coming at you. you you're not yeah. going to look for it. So we do have an incredible moment. And, and the text really speaks amazing. Hope, but if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. I, that, that, that to me is, is, is quite amazing. Now, this 19 challenge, this COVID-19 challenge, mm -hmm. when we are so accustomed to human power, that we have not built up, I like this one, we've not built up our muscles on the virtue of hope. I like, I oh, like, like I that. Like, I, I'm not, that sentence. We've not built up our muscles on the virtue of hope. No. Now, now just, just, just chew that sentence for a little bit for me, okay? <laughs> you see, faith, hope, hmm? and, and love, all, all are intertwined as three theological virtues. Mm -hmm. So, if you exercise them, you build. Yes. If you don't exercise them, you don't build. Like somebody who has stayed in an armchair for 25 years and decides they're getting up and going to walk, you can't walk. Right. Your muscles are atrophied. Yes. So, you, we cannot expect this generation, the millennials, whether you're talking about uh, baby boomers, Z, X, um, A, or down. You, you can't expect this generation to start exercising hope as, as if it's something that we have always done. The generation is going to have to build up hope slowly, slowly, slowly. So that means that we have to give a gym for hope. <laughs> and, and that, that means, you know, you know how people is, is, is have this new religion where, where the gym is your religion. Yes. Well, well, we have to have a gym for hope. And what that means is that every day, every day, you have to think of one or two or three reasons for hope. What are one or two or three blessings that you have? That's why I early on I asked people, you know, write a list of all the ways in which your life has been blessed. Right. All the ways. You just keep writing. And keep writing that list. Keep writing. That's how you're building up hope. Because you realize the, the, the incredible ways that your life has been blessed. Now, we've always also raised one of the most ungrateful generations that we've ever had. Because if we've had so much available that, that <laughs> there's been no sense of gratitude for what has been given because it was nearly like if that was supposed to be how it's supposed to be. Correct. And, Correct. and, and so in gratitude and hope, are hanging together because when we don't feel gratitude for what we have been given then we don't have hope because we don't realize how much has been given and therefore yeah. how much we can actually trust the giver to continue mm -hmm. giving the gifts that we have received so the gym for hope is write a list of everything that you are blessed for everything you wake up this morning and you smile write that on your list 
the, the sun was up, write that on your list. You got something to eat, put that on your list too. You had somebody to talk to, write that. And, and let's go down now to the little reasons of, of, of gratitude. And as we do that, what's going to emerge is people are going to realize how many blessings they have on a day. Yeah. Then on the other hand, you can now write the things that you don't have, not, not the wants, you know, the needs that you don't have, that, that are real. And then you start praying about those and you start waiting to see how God is going to transform those into the reasons for gratitude on the other side. How are you going to move them across? Yeah. Because the real needs, you pray for the real needs. We give thanks for the things that he's already done. That's how, how we have to live in this COVID-19. That's my COVID-19 challenge. That's so, COVID-19. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hope is a, is a virtue. One of the three cardinal virtues. We express it in little everyday things. How do we, now we need to stop and reflect again on the meaning of hope. We can't just take hope for granted. We have to stop and think about this. We have to reflect no. on this. We have to, we have to and, and, and in reflecting, I am proposing, we come at hope through gratitude because when we see the blessings that God has given, we also start to see the graces we have received from God and therefore we can put our hope in him. So, well, then we really have to look at in whom or what did we put our hope in? Is it human science and technology or was it God? Now, <clears throat> you said optimism says things will get better. They always do. Hope says even if things get worse, do not worry. God is with you. <laughs> <laughs> now, hear this. now, I know what St. Paul said, and I know where we go in here. My goodness. Because... You oh, know, you're like, wait, wait, wait. Talk to no, I don't like it. I don't like you it. You, 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 you ask me a question, I don't like it. Because if we look at where we are right now, we know it's going to get worse. And that's the reality. Right. But we so, still have to hope. And that's what that's the difference between optimism and hope, okay? Yeah. Optimism says, well, it's bound to get better. <laughs> hope says, even if it gets worse, I still keep hope because I know the one in whom I trust. You see, hope is trust that the promises that God has made us will be realized. Say that again. Hope is the trust that the promises that God has made to us, those promises will be realized. That's why if you want to build your muscles, you have to do a certain set of exercises, correct? Yeah. So if you want to build the muscles of hope, you have to exercise the muscles of gratitude first. Amen. Amen. Because, because Amen. if hope is Amen. trust that God who promises will mm -hmm. supply, mm -hmm. then we have to start with gratitude by seeing the things that God has already supplied Supply. in my mm -hmm. life without me asking and recognizing how, how blessed I have been by that. And then I will realize that if he has given me this, 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 and all of these things on my list, then I can trust in him to give me these are the things that are necessary and I can't find my way to. I'm going and to take I can a... trust in him to see yeah. me through this COVID-19 time. Yeah. Yeah. That's why yeah. we're building the muscles of gratitude. Of, yeah. of gratitude. And yeah. upon them, you build, you build hope. You know, you know how you have to build your core? Yes. To yes. be able to really exercise all the other muscles well correct if you if you don't have a strong core you fall down you Good. strain your other muscles the and core to, build your core, to build your core sometimes you have to build the muscles around the core first to support the core then you build the core well gratitude is like the muscles around the core <laughs> and hope is the core and hope is the core yeah now let's look at our journey Hope as a virtue, you said, is different from hope in science and technology. 
The yep. latter, which is science and technology, is linked to the myth of steady progress. Things will get better and better all the time. But, but hope is different. Hope right. as a virtue is different. Right. You see, we've lived through this myth of, of the straight arrow of time. Yeah. The time is a straight arrow. And as the arrow proceeds, we get better and better. And that's not necessarily true. I mean, we have more people in human trafficking and slavery today than we had in the Atlantic slave trade before yeah. slavery was outlawed, banned, and made a crime. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. So we are, we are worse off today with slavery as a crime, a crime, the last number I heard was, was 23 million or 22 million people in human trafficking and, sla and slavery. Wow. Um, we had nine, 9 million in the Atlantic slave trade at that, at that stage. Okay, mm -hmm. so have we gotten better? Um, well, you know, we have to ask the question. So the myth of steady progress is a myth that says that, you know, things will get better and better all the time until there's a disruption. Mm -hmm. Hope says whether things get better in the external or not, your God is always going to be present to you and available to you and will see you through this. That's what hope is. It's different. But, but we've just lived. We, our generations, the last couple of generations have lived through five decades of unprecedented growth in economy, in science, in technology, and therefore their lifestyles have also seen growth. And many have only known this time of consistent growth and economic security. But now so many people have lost their jobs. So many people have no idea how they're going to All pay right. their rent, how they're going to, to live. Mortgage, loans, yes. everything, everything. And, and that's why I'm saying this is a time for hope because this is a time where we need to put our hope in Jesus Christ because he is our hope and our salvation. Mm -hmm. If you put your hope in your bank account, you put your hope in, in your, your stocks and your bonds, you put mm -hmm. your hope in your business, a lot of these have gotten wiped out in, in a 24-hour period, huh? Correct. Yeah. And, and yeah. that's why, you know, we have kind of grown up in a time where if you've worked hard enough and you've done well enough financially, you, you don't have to have real hope in God because all your bills will be paid for and you'll have your people around you and all will be well. And, yeah. and that's why I'm saying this is a fundamental challenge to the whole scientific revolution, the myth of the steady growth in science and progress and economy. Mm -hmm. Because what we're facing is, I mean, the, the articles are saying, that the, the economists are now saying, this is worse than the Great Depression. Right. And, and we're still early in it. Huh? Mm -hmm. We haven't mm -hmm. really started to feel the effects. I know right. in Trinidad, there are pockets in Trinidad already crying out in hunger. Yes, yes. yes. In, in hung and, and, and this is now real early. And, yes. and in the next three weeks, is going to escalate even more because yeah. as, as people move away. So remember, many of our families are one week away from, from collapse. Eh? Correct. One Correct. week. Yes. They, they, they get paid every week yes. and, and they need that, that yeah. weekly wage to, to see themselves through the next week. Yes. And, and, and remember, <clears throat> if they're not working and they're not being paid, there is nothing. And, yeah. and this is where hope has to be made real. And mm. that's why I'm linking the three, faith, hope, and love. Yeah. yeah. I have faith that we as Trinidad and Tobago are so, going to ensure that everybody will yes. have what they need to make it yes. through this. I, 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 yeah. I have faith in God that God mm -hmm. will inspire us. Mm -hmm. People of goodwill will inspire mm -hmm. us to do the loving thing rather than the selfish thing. To do the thing of hope rather than the thing of, of despair. To do the thing of graciousness rather than the thing of, of ingratitude. That, that's my hope. 
Well, um, you know, as you were just sharing there about some families who live by the week, um, somebody WhatsApped me um, today and they were saying, Derek, you know, I'm trying to get help for a family that's in the Las Cuevas, Blanchichel, between Las Cuevas and Blanchichel's area. You know, and this is a whole family who today have nothing. So I told them, send me their names and their address because we're yes. doing this outreach from all our parishes. So yes. I said, okay, send me the names and the addresses and we will get help to them. You know, yes. and, and this was somebody on WhatsApp, which is falling right in line with exactly what you are saying. Yes. Your, your, your words we, on it. Yeah. We have to become hope for other people. Eh? Yes. So, you know, many times I've gone into situations and I said, Lord, I am excited to know how you're going to work this out <laughs> because I can't find it and right. I don't see it. And this is yeah. one of those. I'm yeah. excited to see how God is going to work this out because I know God is. And, and, and part of that working out has to be me and you who are willing to, to do the thing of, of love and faith and put what we have at his disposal so that all of his people can have what they need. And that's what it's going to be. A neighbor is going to share with a neighbor. One of the things I'm saying to everybody is start growing a kitchen garden today. Excuse me, just just hold on a minute. No, don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. I sent you 14 seedlings. They're in, the, plant they in the ground. They're in that the ground. Have your not only in the ground. Coming. Not only in the, in the ground, but I've had some agricultural experts advising me and I'm having some grow boxes putting up. <laughs> right, okay. All right. I have your pumpkin if you see how nice. <laughs> Ready to put in up my grow boxes. I'm right, starting right. to grow because yeah. if every bit of what is now manicured lawn mm -hmm. becomes food production in Correct. everybody's house yeah. we will have more than enough food to feed the nation yeah because yeah. you might have a chicken and i might have pumpkin correct correct and i know you don't eat chicken but we like your pumpkin though <laughs> <laughs> No, I was talking to somebody from Gonzales and he told me to tell you hello. And, you know, I, I, he was he was planting in his little 10 by 10 area. Yes. I think it was his daughter was planting in a little 10 by 10 area in Gonzales. And you know where the houses are pretty close. Yes. And he said his daughter started planting already, you know. So I know he's watching the show because he never misses it. That if, if you haven't as yet, we what we don't need in the next two years, let me tell you what we don't need. We do not need manicured lawns. We don't need rose gardens. We don't need um, decorative flowers. In the yeah. next two years, here's what we do need. We do need every productive space producing food because if you're producing more than you need, your neighbor yeah. is going to need. And yeah. even if it's more than you and your neighbor, we have plenty of people who don't have place to plant where... Mm -hmm we can share food with, with other parts of our country that are in need. And, and so I've heard about farmers who have stuff that they want to dump. Don't dump. Let us help in distributing yeah, 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 that yeah. food Absolutely. to the poorest of the poor throughout this country. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let, let, us, let us really try to, to distribute the food so that yeah. we, 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 we ensure that everybody has what they need. And that's how we become hope to others. Yeah. So I said here that, you know, we've been plunged into the unthinkable. Right. We have shut schools, churches, temples, mosques, and business. Many find this absurd. One preacher <laughs> in the U.S. preached against the closing of the churches and kept his open. Well, he yeah. died from COVID-19. Yes, he died. I know that. Yeah. He died. You know, the first effect of COVID-19 is the immediate health challenge. Yeah. As a first effect. Mm -hmm. And that's, we can't dodge this. We have to play by the science. We have to understand the science. We have to keep the social distancing. In fact, you know, Trinidad and Tobago and most of the Caribbean has done relatively well. Huh? Yes. We've not had the kind of spikes that other countries mm -hmm. have had. And, mm -hmm. and here's the two things that are important. We have to distance and lock down so we mm -hmm. flatten the curve. Why? Because we only have 600 hospital beds. Yeah. Yeah. And if we have 601 people who need a bed, yeah. 
yeah. the one person trouble. is in trouble. Yeah. So we have to keep those infected to below 600 at mm -hmm. all times mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. this whole pandemic. And that mm -hmm. means we have to do the distancing, the locking down. Everybody mm -hmm. has to become acutely aware of what the symptoms are. You have right. to, if you wonder, check your temperature. If you're mm -hmm. not sure, check in with, with a friend. If you're really not sure, check in the hotline and, mm -hmm. and a physician to check. So that if we all do our part, we will keep the curve flat. Yeah. And if we keep the curve flat, then we, we will not send the country and the health ser service into the spiral out of control that we cannot cope with. When you see Italy, New York, these places, their health services got overwhelmed. That's what we can't afford that in Trinidad because we just don't have the kind of resources those countries have. Italy has one of the best health services, and yet we have a problem. Yeah. So yeah. that's the first thing. We have to live by this. We have to understand the science. But yeah. on the other hand, we're using a very blunt instrument to, by locking down to contain the virus because mm -hmm. we will have devastating effects that we're already seeing. People are losing their jobs. Yeah. Businesses are folding down. Yeah. People, employers are saying, we don't know how to keep this going. In very small businesses where they were month to month to pay their employees, they right. don't have what it takes to continue paying. And so mm -hmm. we, we, we are seeing that we are having businesses collapsing. Mm -hmm. We're going to have rapid unemployment, yes. dis disruption of the supply chain shortage of food and rising prices at the same time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and those are the secondary impacts of COVID-19. Right. The primary is the health, the mm -hmm. secondary is this, this societal ch challenge. So I've started to use a different vocabulary. We have a health challenge but the patient is the society. We, 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 we. we have a health Challenge, challenge, but the patient, patient is, society. is the society. And the individual parts of the patient that are suffering from COVID-19 have to be dealt with well if the patient is going to survive. But the patient is what we have to get surviving. Because if we, let's, let's just say we do the, the extreme. We mm -hmm. lock down for three years. Hmm. What's going to happen at the end of three years? The patient will die. Patient will die, yeah. Okay, so the patient is the society. The part, so it's like if I had gangrene on my finger or, or, or tetanus on my finger or a sore on my finger, I have to address the finger, but the patient is not the finger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because if you tell me don't eat for five days or for 60 days to solve the, 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 the problem on my finger, I will yeah. actually get the finger okay, you know? <laughs> but you will die. <laughs> you will have to be patient. Correct, yeah. So I'm, I'm saying that COVID-19 is not simply an individual health challenge. COVID-19 is a societal health challenge. And we have to look at the health of the part of the body that is ailing, the people suffering with COVID-19, the overwhelm of the health system, but we also must look at the the health of the of the patient, which is the the society as a whole. How do we keep the patient alive while we're dealing with the ill effects of COVID nineteen on parts of the body? That's the new frame that I have for the for the challenge. You know, but but, but the the solution must. I am seeing come from a collective. It must come from the collective genius of the people thinking yeah. towards that goal, thinking towards the goal. How do we take care of us? Not the I, but yeah. all of us. Correct. And, and in taking care of all of us, we have to make sure we're taking care of the most vulnerable. Yes. Yes. And we have to take, make sure that we are, we are keeping the parts of the body locked down sufficiently to ensure that we keep the contagion under wraps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're with me now? 
I'm with you. I'm with you. Okay. So this is a different frame of, of, of reference right now. Because mm -hmm. in this frame of reference, we have both the individual person but the whole society. Exactly, correct. And we have to look at the health of both. And now we have to balance between these two. Because no sense saving my finger if I'm going to die in, in the rush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, th th this to me, this calls for, I want to use the word because I think we use this already, generosity. An no, immense... no, 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 no. Extreme generosity. I, well, get I was right. getting there. I was getting, extreme I was getting there. Extreme generosity. Extreme generosity. And it is extreme generosity because it is looking in your cupboard and saying, hear what? I have two tins of corned beef, two pack of peas, and my neighbor has nothing. And how let me I give share? them, how do I share this? How do I and, share? And that is extreme generosity yes. by saying, I have to give them because they will yes. not Correct. live. Correct. And, and that's why I'm saying we have to face the most difficult question. Is the medicine of lockdown worse than the disease itself? That's what we don't know. But we have to work through this together. We do not have any answers. But, but this is a challenge and this is a question that pushes us at the very edge where we must see a grace and an opportunity. If we are weak to the mystery of God, who is in, in all realities, all things, and all situations. So this is also a moment where we have to rethink what we actually need. Yeah. Yeah. Are we yeah. using more than what we need? Right. Yes, 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 yes. I, 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 I want to say this to, to people outside there too. Don't go and eat out your whole, your whole cupboard of food. You know, we, sometimes in our lockdown, sometimes comfort food you know we yeah. really don't eat that that amount of food but we want to eat out everything you know i i, I think we have to think the marathon yes to think, uh, this is not this is not the hundred meter dash no this no, is, no this is this is um this is a long this is a long 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 term so our worldview st paul had a very different worldview from ours eh? yeah in romans he says but we also glory in our sufferings. In our sufferings. <laughs> because we know that sufferings produce perseverance. Nice. Perseverance, Lovely. character, and yes. character, hope. Hope, yes. Talk to me about that now. No, but, but perseverance, I love it. You know, suffering produces perseverance. Pressure. <laughs> and perseverance, character, and character, hope. Character, hope. Now, Let's take this text and let's take us today, okay? Yeah. Suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character. Character, hope. Yeah. Correct? So if things get worse, yeah. and if in fact we are plunged into a dark moment yeah. where the patient, society, yeah. Is now going through some heart attacks or mm -hmm, clots mm -hmm. or arrests of this or that or the other. Mm -hmm. That suffering will produce perseverance. Yeah. That perseverance will build character and character hope. Our role is to try to avert from the worst of that. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I'm saying this is a moment where we must keep one eye on the COVID, the patients, the lockdown. The, gotcha. the social distancing and these things that we need to do. But we yeah. must have one other eye that we keep it on the society, on the poor, on, on the marginalized, on the person Absolutely. who has no food in their cupboard, the mother that has nothing to give their children, the, the one who does not know tomorrow or today what they're going to do to, to keep, to keep their, their family fed. Yeah. We have to do both of these. Yeah. And that's, yeah. that's why I'm speaking to hope, faith, mm -hmm. and love. Mm -hmm, the greatest mm -hmm. of these is, is, love. is the love. Yes. Yeah. 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 So you and all I'm are... saying, I'm saying there's a, 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 a disconnect between the Paul's worldview and ours. We mm -hmm. think that riches builds character and, yes. and that character 
builds builds wealth and that wealth builds builds personal yeah and 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 what what St Paul is saying is that no 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 it is suffering that produces perseverance. Perseverance building character and character is building hope. Building hope, yeah. And so yeah. the dark moments we're going to be plunged into in a society are going to be light moments in the gym of hope that we are being offered by God. Gym of hope, eh? exercise for people. We have to exercise and we have to persevere in this yes. suffering. So it will build character and character will bring hope. And yes. hope does not does put not us to shame. To shame <laughs> because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given yes. to us. And that's from Romans chapter 5, verses 3 to 5. People, I, I, I just hope that those who are looking on, who are listening, um, it, you all are really taking in what His grace is sharing with us. This conversation because it's so important that we don't lose hope that yes there will be suffering but it will bring it will bring us character and character hope you know so and, rather than rather yes. than expecting things to get better and better each day paul realized that there would be hardship and suffering not to be avoided but embrace and the suffering will be perseverance Perseverance, <laughs> character, and character hope. I don't know how to put a little bit of honey to make this medicine go down. <laughs> no, well, here this. What is worse is he was beheaded. <laughs> I know. No, what is worse is that he was beaten. How much times with the two? Yes. yes, he was shipwrecked. He was thrown out. He was thrown into jail. We, all kind of thing. We have we have lived so long in the mythical notion of progress that we have forgotten the very foundations of Christianity. Yes. Yeah. That the, the, at the very root of Christianity is this virtue called hope that only emerges when we don't see our way. And, mm -hmm. and we are giving, given an opportunity in these days to start seeing, experiencing, and bringing hope alive again. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you, you said, let's look at the progress of Trinidad and Tobago again and yeah. consider the pockets of relentless poverty amidst extreme wealth. Mm -hmm. and the absence of a social safety net. See the lack of moral character, the lack of moral character that pervades the nation at all levels. We have an opportunity now to fix it. Because, because of the easy living, the easy money, the easy lifestyle, the easy wealth that we have had over the last, the last um, decades, um, mm -hmm. we've not had to build perseverance, character, or hope. And and because of that, we we have we have built a kind of an intemperance and a and a form of of of, of um of I don't know lack of character at all levels of our society, and and that that has been one of the big challenges. Mm -hmm. Look look mm -hmm. at the prevalence of corruption, yeah, yeah. the acceptance that this is that a way is of our, life. We have, we have life. Look yeah, again yeah. at our our indiscipline and the way we have made freedom license and the, the right to mash up the place and to do whatever we want to do, yeah. however yeah. we want. Look at that. Yeah. that yeah. That's really something that we, 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 have, we have to now stop, take stock, and, mm -hmm. and recognize we have to become a different kind of country. Yeah. You said, if we believe that there is a God and that we are called to live in faith, how is it we put so much stock in worldly wealth and progress? We've, read, we, we've been sold this lock, stock, and barrel. You know? Yes. We've been sold that if you have enough wealth, nothing could go wrong in your life. Yeah. But we've not been taught if you have Jesus Christ, all will be well in your life. We've not been taught that. And, and we not live that really. What, what we've been living is, well, my hope is in my wealth. Not in the service I can give to others, not in the faith that I have, not in the in the in the hope that I live, mm -hmm. um, and not in the love that I that I exude. And and many times, you know, parents have passed on to their kids or given the legacy to their kids of a great education and a good career. Mm -hmm. But but the faith and the hope hasn't been transmitted with it. Right. And yeah. so what they've gotten out of the Christian hope 
is a great education and a good career. Yeah, yeah. But not faith and hope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, Easter, this Easter, which we've just embarked on, the world is faced, you said, with a most formidable challenge. A microbe, we spoke about this the last time, a microbe has reset the economic, the political, and the technological progress we've taken for granted for the last five decades. Now, yep. where do we put our hope? This is the fundamental Easter challenge for Christians and for people of other beliefs. We will not despair. We will not despair. This reset of the, of the world economy, this reset of the, of the civilization, this reset of, 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 of the world, the whole world, and of Trinidad and Tobago and the Caribbean, this reset has been a, an, an incredible moment for all of us. Um, it seems surreal. You, you think you're in a play that you'll wake up from one day. Well, yeah. no, this is real. This is here, and it's here to stay. Yeah. So that as we, as we recognize what we're, what we're dealing with, where are you going to put your hope? Is it, in, is it in your bank account? Is it in your stocks? Is it in, in, in your children? Is it in God? Where do you put your hope? And, and this is a real question that this micro is challenging with us again. Yeah. You, 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 you mentioned Pope Benedict XVI in his encyclical Space Salvi, you know, Boy, saved yeah. in hope. And, yes. and go into that for, for us, you know. He says, here too we see a distinguishing mark of Christians, the fact that they have a future. Yes. It is not that they know the details of what awaits them, but they know in general terms that their life will not end in emptiness. Yeah. Only when the future is certain as a positive reality does it become positive possible to live the present as well so now we can say christianity was not only good news the communication of a wow. hitherto unknown content the dark door of time of the future has been thrown open yeah, yeah, yeah. so christianity is not only good news yeah. but it is also a, a plunge through this dark door in the future that we're facing. And I mean, what a powerful quote for this time, eh? That is a Because piece. we're looking at the dark door time. We mm -hmm. don't know how we're going to do these next two years. Yeah. But yeah. I know that there is a future that is better than our past. And there is a I future. Know yes. That is better than our past. And mm -hmm. I know that God has a plan for us if we will hold firm to God. Those are the Amen. two things I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that is, that's beautiful. Um, to me, you know, I would even like to use that in funerals. And I'm, I've just done my fourth funeral. I did one yesterday. I did two last week. And I did two the week before. Right. You know, but this, the, the, this beautiful writing. The by dark book, door of time wow. of the future has yeah. been thrown open. Yeah. And that's what the resurrection does. Death, mm -hmm. where is your sting? Death, where right. is your power? Yeah, yeah. The one who has hope lives differently. The one who hopes Absolutely. has been granted the gift of new life. You know, mm -hmm. what, what, what hope for somebody who's just lost somebody, somebody who is now living through this, this whole situation. Mm -hmm. Hope is founded on a relationship with the God who raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Happy Easter, everybody. Happy Easter. That's the news. That's the news, that Christ has been raised from the dead, and having been raised from the dead, we too have been raised with him. Yeah, yeah. We too have been raised with him. And, 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 and Christ having been raised from the dead, what is there in the future that can hold us down? And, and the, the key is faith, hope, and love. Eh? That's the key. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If everybody grows a little something in their house, and if we go back to how my aunt and my granny used to live with a, with a, a, a fowl running around the yard, 
or five mm -hmm. producing producing eggs yeah and chicken from time to time yeah if we if we go back to to the fundamentals we mm -hmm. will have enough to share with other people yeah yeah and this country will have enough with what what is grown by by the agricultural sec sector was grown in the household what is grown in the caribbean we will have enough in this region to to keep ourselves going for the next while and and that's where we have to realize faith hope and love come together but that means we can't sit down and say well you know god will provide we also must say what is the action of hope that god is asking of me today that's what we also must do well we have about five minutes so okay. you said the one who has hope lives differently the one who hopes has been granted the gift of new life and hope is founded on a relationship with the god who raised jesus christ from the dead and no matter how things go and the crucifixion of christ was the worst of things jesus never lost sight of his father he never lost hope even when he suffered on the cross when he said my god god my god, my god. Why why have you forsaken me? But it was I, I not like a cry you, of despair. But I thought that was a cry of despair. <laughs> no, it was an affirmation of hope. It's an affirmation of hope. Because what we know is that he was quoting from Psalm 22. Yeah. And Psalm 22 ends with the salvation of the nations. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> we put, we too must put our hope in God. Hope. God, yeah. When when Jesus cries out from the first lines of Psalm 22, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The psalm goes on to talk about all the ways in which God is with the sufferer. Yeah. And it ends by talking about God becoming the hope of the nations. It's amazing. It's amazing. Go, go and read the psalm. Go, 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 go and check Psalm 22. Key message. You said hope is ultimately hope in God who loves yes. and saves us even in the midst of trials and difficulties. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now you're just and, giving and, the action step. You tell me the action step, all right? You said, and this is for all of us outside here. Read the whole of Psalm 22 as a psalm of hope, hope in, in God. God. Yeah. Yes. And guess what is what the scripture reading is now? Psalm 22. I hope Psalm 22. This, you, know. you hope. I hope I in hope. God. <laughs> I hope in God. Amen. You know, it's, it's a wonderful uh, moment in this post-Easter time to really refocus and to really put our hope in God. Because as we as we refocus and as we put our hope in God, we recognize that God is the God of of, of, of hope, faith, and love. As, as Pope Benedict said so beautifully, the doors have been thrown open for the future. And Christ is the Omega, as Christ is the Alpha. And, and therefore, all time belongs to Christ. And therefore, our hope is in this Christ. Yes. So I think we should pray. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your tremendous grace and love. We ask, O oh Lord, that your hope, that you give us this virtue of hope and that we may put our hope in you, that our hope in you, O oh God, will take us to faith and to love in brand new ways, that as we grow in our hope, we will learn through faith to share what we have and through love to share with others this word and this life that you have given to us. We make our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise be to God.